Hey, welcome back to Faithology Today. It's Mark Nathaniel Skelton, your teacher and host. And today we got an exciting show. We're going to be talking about the Galio inscriptions. Have you heard of the Galio inscriptions? See, remember, our mission is to help build faith and destroy doubt. So I have another piece of archaeological evidence that supports the biblical text, in particular the book of the Acts of the Apostles. So let's dive right in it and drive your uh let me draw your attention rather to acts chapter 18 verses 12 through 17 acts chapter 18 verses 12 through 17 so let me give you a little background information before we launch from the scripture text and introduce you to this individual um that you know existed in history so paul is going about he's on his missionary trips and he's helping to build the church of christ and basically he just left athens and he's arrived at corinth he's a tent builder He's um, he's connected with Aquila and Priscilla. They're building tents. T uh, Timotheus and Silas have just came in from Math Macedonia. They're preaching the word of God. They're teaching it. And it seems like the Jews aren't really receiving it in this area in particular. They, they're not really receiving the message all that well. So he's basically like, you know what? I'm about to start teaching to the Gentiles now. And so, you know, once again, we're going to be launching 12. And so basically he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. And so now, if you haven't been paying attention, now's the time. Because verse 12, we're introduced to the individual. I'm going to read this segment, verse 12 through 17, and kind of break it down. And, and, and we'll look at um, this piece of evidence and how it supports this individual that is introduced to us in the text. So verse 12 states, And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul. And it brought him to the judgment seat, saying, This fellow persuadeth men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong and wicked lewdness, O ye Jews, reason would that I should bear with you. But if it's a question of words and names and of your law, look ye to it, for I will be no judge of such matters." And he dragged them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Gallio cared for none of these things. So let's look at the situation. Basically, a situation um, came up between the Jews of this area and Paul to the point where it was a civil matter. So the Jews brought Paul basically like to a small claims court where Gallio was the judge and the hearer of the matters. He was the deputy. And so the Jews were telling Gallio their side of what was going on. And then Paul was about to speak and Gallio cuts him off. And basically he's like, I don't want anything to do with this. You guys get away from here. Basically like, and he drives him away from the judgment seat. And you can even see um, some physical violence took place between the Greeks and this chief ruler of the synagogue, and he was actually beat before the judgment seat, and Gallio didn't care about these situations. So we can see he was a person of authority, kind of took a hands-off approach. But the question I want to ask to you is, did, was Gallio a real person? Did he exist? Was Paul real? Is there any historical evidence that supports the scriptures of a man named Gallio that was the deputy of this area? What time did this take place, right? So let me introduce to you the Gallio inscriptions, also known as the Delphi inscriptions. So let's talk a little bit about its discovery, its descriptions, its contents, and the significance of what this means for the hearer. So basically, the Gallio inscriptions, the Gallio inscriptions are fragments that were discovered at Delphi near the building of Apollo in Greece. Delphi was the place of the most significant oracle in the classic world the Pythia, the priest of the building of Apollo. And so the inscription was found in 1905 by a doctoral student who shifted through some inscriptions collected from Delphi. And it contains a letter from the Emperor Claudius to the town of Delphi. So here goes a little more descriptions of what this is. So the so-called Gallio inscription is a collection of nine fragments. And these are letters that were written once again by the Roman Emperor Claudius in 52 AD, the year of our Lord, 52 AD. So about 20 years, we could say, after Christ ascended from the earth. And so, you know, this is this is pretty recent um, time frame. And 
Um, initially, there was four fragments that were unearthed, then three additional ones, and finally two more. And there was at first a disagreement as to whether the pieces were part of, of different inscriptions, but finally scholars agreed that all nine fragments were from the same inscription. So let's talk about the content. What is it talking about? So in this in the inscription, it was written in Greek, and it mentions Gallio as the proconsul or the deputy, those are used interchangeably, of Achaia, confirming the information given in the book of Acts 18, verses 12. Um, it also, you know, so a little bit of the content, it inter, it, in its introduction, it mentions the title of Caesar, so Tiberius Claudius Caesar Augustus, um, dating the letter to the beginning of 52 AD, historically. And it also in, it mentions Gallio. So basically, there's there's information and you can look it up online. But basically, um, the, uh, the emperor has a concern with how, you know, destitute the city is. And so I quote, it says, but now, since it is said to be destitute of citizens, he's talking about Delphi, as Gallio, my friend and proconsul, recently reported to me. So basically, he's he's writing to Delphi about how an individual named Gallio, who is his friend and is the proconsul, uh, reported back to him that the city's destitute of citizens. And he's actually at the end, he orders and encourages, uh, invites well-born people uh, from other cities to become inhabitants at Delphi. So that's pretty interesting. So let's look at what is the significance of this? What is the significance of this inscription? So basically the existence of Gallio and his position is confirmed by an archaeological discovery at Delphi back in 1905. And I believe it was made public, depending on the resource, the source you read it, it was made public in 1908. But and it consists of these nine stone fragments. It helps to establish the chronological order and narrative of Paul as it is presented in the historical document known as the Book of Acts. And it also, um, this particular find shows how archaeology can give us a better understanding of the biblical text, especially in giving us dates and times that things have happened. By being able to date this, this part of Paul's work, we can get a better understanding of when Paul visited other churches, cities, and towns during his missionary journey. So Paul's whole mission was to help build a church that Christ purchased with his blood, the Church of Christ, and Paul was a real person on a real mission. And so uh, this discovery supports the integrity of the book, all right? And and so if this is true, and you know, these the little small facts in here that are like, wow, isn't it awesome? You know, the book is true, but isn't it awesome to find something out in the world that helps confirm it, it that helps to give you trust in the book? If we can trust the book, then we can trust the messengers in it, and then the message that, and this is where I always go with this, that the, the son of God was made flesh. That's that's outlined in John 1 14. You know, he was in the form of God and he took upon himself the form of a servant and was made like us. And he lived a sinless life and he chose these disciples to keep the mission going. One of them named Judas betrayed him. Right. And then this led him to be in front of Pontius Pilate, another Roman authority, and who has an inscription out there that proves his existence, which led to crucifixion, which was um, a well-known method of, of uh, you know, basically death during that time frame. And so where are we going with this? Like Jesus Christ, you know, love has a name. Jesus Christ died for you. Yeah, you, that, I'm talking to you. And, and it's no secret. That's the plan that I'm trying to share is God's plan of salvation for you and your family and that you can have um, eternal security, whatever, you know, whatever your walk of life, black, white, Jew, Gentile, male or female, whether you are agnostic or not, or whatever faith that you come from, you need to know that, you know, God, he loves you and his, his way of getting through to you is through the message, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. I don't think any other religion or philosophy can offer eternal security made out of love. That's logical. That's, that's theological. That's faith. It's all wrapped in the one, the person of Christ. And so where I'm going with this is I just want to encourage your faith. I want, once again, you know, if, if you're of the contrary, that's all right. Listen, I want to challenge you. I want, I want to challenge you with this information, um, you know, to reconcile it with your thoughts is, is the scriptures real. And, and it is. And if you are of the faith, Hey, remember, you're in the right thing. You're doing what you need to do. This is to build you up because I know there's a lot of people who may um, do it unintentionally or maybe not aware of what they're doing, but try to sow doubt in the believer's seed. And so I 
want to protect your mind, let you know this scriptures is true. And if you want to learn more about God, you know, reach out to me. If you want to learn more about how to, uh, you know, wash away your sins. Okay. How do you get into, uh, the, the church that Christ built? That's where, that's where I come in. That's the whole point of this is to help glorify and lift up the Lord. So I hope this was a blessing to you as much as it was to me and, uh, stay tuned. We got, we got more information coming. Like I said, we're just scratching the surface every time, um, a shovel goes into the ground. Another skeptic is buried. Um, I'm loving what we're doing. And, uh, if you got any questions or any comments, just, you know, drop me a line, faithology today at gmail.com. And, uh, We'll, 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 um, hey, we'll take care of that for you. So till next time, be blessed and uh, God bless. Peace.